We have discussed the mens rea, or culpability, required to establish complicity. Normally, that is purpose to aid or encourage the principal's conduct. Now we turn to the actus reus of accessory liability. In our discussion of attempt liability, that other letter A doctrine, we had to sort through conflicting doctrines of the actus reus, dangerous proximity and substantial step being the main ones. Will similar uncertainty arise here? Let's look at the case of Wilcox versus Jeffrey. Without legal authorization, the great Coleman Hawkins plays for an audience in Britain. The defendant is a reporter who attended and wrote a review, after also being present at the airport when Hawkins arrived from the U.S. The defendant was present at the illegal concert, but there is no evidence that the defendant's presence mattered. But the court opinion implies it does not really matter, legally, whether the show would have gone on in the defendant's absence. Assuming culpability can be shown, is mere presence all it takes to establish complicity? The court's language at points might suggest so, but the key fact, I think, is that the defendant paid for a ticket. Would it have made a difference if he had entered on a press pass? We don't know. The court seems ready to count any sort of encouragement as sufficient, even if it made no difference at all to the principal. Coleman Hawkins hadn't traveled all that way not to play his sax. The defendant was prosecuted as an accomplice because his review brought his name to the prosecutor's attention. It appears that he might have gone after the whole crowd, except maybe those who had booed the performance. Wow. We have to ask, if the match is illegal, are all the shouters complicit? Obviously, this fight will go on anyway. If everybody's screaming, nobody can be heard by the absolute perps, whose ears are ringing anyway. Should that matter? So wide a net of potential liability might make us uneasy. Suppose the guy with the earbuds is aiming at a person. Someone shouts, get him! If the shooter can't hear, is the shouter in the clear? The answer traditionally is yes. The signal to shoot not only must be transmitted, the prosecution must show the signal was at least capable of being received. Under the MPC, we get a different answer. No, the shouter is not in the clear. The focus is on what was done and meant, not on its effect on the principle. The MPC tells us that one who solicits or attempts to aid is convictable as an accomplice. Solicitation is a defined offense in the MPC. A person is guilty of solicitation to commit a crime if, with the purpose of promoting or facilitating its commission, he commands, encourages, or requests another person to commit such crime. But what about the absolute perp who's wearing his beats by Dr. Dre or, or who is deaf? or is in a dead zone without cell service, or has non-functional Wi-Fi. In the following subsection, uncommunicated solicitation, the MPC adds, it is immaterial that the actor fails to communicate with the person he solicits if his conduct was designed to affect such communication. The comment to this section explains, where complicity is based on agreement or solicitation, one does not ask for evidence that they were actually operative psychologically on the perpetrator. There ought to be no difference in the case of aid. Wow. What about this? 
Remember those days before social distancing? Suppose the gang is watching an illegal dogfight broadcast on the flat screen. Are they convictable of the crime of dogfighting as accessories? Of course not under traditional doctrine, but under the MPC? The answer is no. No one can intend what she believes to be impossible. It is impossible to aid or encourage anyone by screaming at a TV screen, but that's not the real point. Under the MPC, impossibility, legal or factual, is immaterial where the charge is attempt. And attempted aid is complicity, failed communication is solicitation. The point is that no one can form the purpose or have the belief that her screaming at the image on a TV screen can have any effect in the world it represents. Shame on those who would watch dogfighting, but they aren't accomplices unless they act with the purpose of encouraging or aiding. And what about fans of legitimate sports who watch on TV? Sorry, sports fan, we're not really trying. We scream anyway to bond, to vent, to feel good, but not to help or encourage.